Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. And this week, I'm not photographing a damn thing. But a few weeks ago, I was able to photograph something. January 23rd, I think, to be precise, it was like the coldest day of the year. And that something was Orion, both the constellation and the nebula. But today, I want to really focus on the constellation of Orion. It's something I like to photograph at least once a year with a big wide angle lens. And last year, sometime around the summertime, I got a new star tracker, the Move Shoot Move Nomad, and a new camera lens, the Rokinon 24mm f1.4. And I've mostly been using those for nightscapes, things like that, Milky Way nightscapes. But recently, I wanted to try it on some deep sky stuff. Extra super deluxe, ultra fat shit, insane wide. Deep sky astrophotography and the Orion constellation was the perfect target. So if you want to see how that went, join us in today's episode of This is not working. I cannot feel my fingers at all. So this past summer, Move Shoot Move sent me their latest Star Tracker, the Nomad. And actually between then and now, I've really fallen in love with it as my Star Tracker for small nightscapes and just really small deep sky projects like the Orion Constellation. It's just so incredibly portable and it takes no time to set up and get ready to roll. Now I've got a full review that I did when they sent me this tracker and you can check that out up here or down in the description below. But if you're just curious about one of these and see what it's like doing the Orion Constellation, then I'll break it down for you real quick. And first of all, they did not pay me to make this video. They just sent me one of these for review and said I could keep it. So that's about it. I'm doing this because I actually love this thing. So yeah, this is it. This is the Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker. It's one of the smallest, most portable and affordable star trackers on the market, sort of. It's definitely one of the smallest and most portable for sure. It costs about 209 US dollars, which is definitely cheaper than almost all the other star trackers. The only thing is you're gonna need some accessories and I'll get to those in just a second. But first things first, it's got a little Arca Swiss plate at the bottom, so you need to attach it to a ball head with Arca Swiss like this. And then from there, you attach another ball head to the front, or then you can also attach your camera to that ball head. So you're gonna end up needing two ball heads. And of course, if you don't feel like dealing with ball heads, you can always get an Arca Swiss clamp. These things are pretty cheap and attach your Star Tracker to anything that this can attach to, such as the plate from a pan and tilt tripod, or what I've been using to attach my Star Tracker to a tripod are these Allen Wallace V and Z mounts right here. A couple more accessories you're gonna need are things to help you polar align your star tracker to the north or south celestial pole. Obviously in the northern hemisphere, we're gonna use Polaris, the North Star. In the southern hemisphere, it's a good bit trickier. I cover most of this in my review. I'm just gonna quickly brush up on it. I got the kit with the laser. So I've been using this laser, screws right into the back of the star tracker, turn it on, it shoots a green laser beam, and I can point that right directly at the North Star, and I'm very loosely polar aligned. It works just fine with a wide angle lens like a 24 millimeter. I would not use that method with telephoto lenses, but that's not really what this thing is for anyway. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you don't have Polaris, you don't really have a Southern Star, then you can get the bracket to mount your phone to the Star Tracker and use your phone to polar align. I found that was a very fun method. But of course, I've been wanting lately to just try to get the most accurate polar alignment possible. When you point a laser at the North Star, you're not actually pointing at the North Celestial Pole. You're just kind of somewhere in the general area. I want to point right at the North Celestial Pole. So recently I got the polar scope. Now I can attach this to my star tracker, look through this hole here. And there's that little target on the inside. I'll open up an app like Polar Aligner Pro and see exactly where the North Star is supposed to be in that reticle, in that target. The polar scope attaches right kind of where the laser gets screwed in. Just take that out. You can either use the red screw that came with the Nomad or the red base to the laser pointer to screw the polar scope right on the back of the Nomad. And there we have it. You can use the laser to get close to the North Star and the polar scope to really get the North Celestial Pole centered up properly. 
And if I'm having trouble seeing the reticle or target inside this polar scope, it came with this glow in the dark illuminator. Just basically take it, stick it next to a bright light, like a flashlight for a minute, and then it's gonna glow in the dark and I can slip it right over the top of the polar scope. And then when I look through here, this should illuminate that target on the inside without me having to shine a light through it. This is a really nice, convenient little accessory that they sent with the Polar Scope. Well, just a minute ago, I said that you can use the Allen Wallace V or Z mounts to mount your Star Tracker 2, and that's what I've been using. I've been using that to mount the Star Tracker 2 and to Polar Align. Well, recently, I've just really fallen out of love with that. It just takes way too long. So I got something that's gonna be a lot more accurate and faster. This right here. This is Move Shoot Moves Equatorial Wedge Base. It's just like the base you would get with a, a bigger Star Tracker or even a go-to mount. It's got the two screws in the back that you turn the same direction simultaneously and it'll move it left or right. And the big screw on the front that moves it up and down. I recently did an experiment to show you how much easier it's gonna to be to use a wedge mount as opposed to the Allen Wallace V mount or maybe a pan and tilt tripod. So you can see the V-mount, you can spin things around like this, 360 degrees, and also move them up and down. So you should be able to center up the North Star easily. But let me show you what actually goes wrong. I've got a white piece of paper with a black dot up there on the wall. That's gonna be my North Star. Let's try to point this laser at it and see if we can actually get it on there. All right. Trying to get the center of this laser right on that black dot. Let's tighten it down. And it's gone way below it. So let's try again, shall we? Let's get it up a little higher and then tighten it down. All right, now it's a little too high, so I'll loosen it just a touch and try to get it down. All right. Oh, look, as I try to tighten it back down, it just goes down some more. Let's try again. Get it good and tight. Of course, every time I try to tighten it, it just moves down. And as you can see, that can be very time consuming and very frustrating. So that's why I decided to go ahead and upgrade to the wedge. So let's see how fast it takes me to get the laser right on that dot up there. That's our fake North Star for now. seconds. Both the Polar Scope and the Wedge cost somewhere around $80 to $90, so they're not the cheapest of accessories, but they are the most accurate, and I think they're well worth it. If you're just starting out with one of these, you might want to get a laser or just the phone bracket. You can get pretty decent polar alignment with both of those, but when you want to advance and start to getting the most accurate polar alignment and long exposures you possibly can, eventually upgrade to these two. That's that's how I did it, and I think it was worth it like that. So this is the full rig we're gonna be shooting Orion with. Let's break it down. Got everything on top of this Manfrotto B-Free tripod. On top of the tripod, I've got the Move Shoot Move wedge base right here. And on the wedge base, I have the actual Move Shoot Move Nomad right here. Between the Nomad and the ball head, I have the Move Shoot Move V-mount. And the main reason I'm using this, it's got a rotator. That way I can move my camera and ball head out of the way of the laser pointer right here and the polar scope. Connected to the camera, I've got an intervalometer so I can take very long exposures and I never have to touch the camera. And speaking of cameras, let's talk about this setup right here. This is the Rokinon 24 millimeter F1.4 lens. It's a manual lens. That means it sends no electronic signals to the camera. It's all manual. So my aperture right here has to be set like that. Normally I would have it pretty wide open at f1.4 or 1.8, but since this is gonna be sitting on a Star Trekker taking two or three minute long exposures, we're gonna close it up a little bit to f4. I doubt you can even see that. That way I'll have sharper stars, less chance of any kind of aberrations, weird color fringing, anything like that. The camera itself is a Canon T5i, AKA 700D, that I've had Astro modified. This is a pretty old camera. It didn't cost me but about $200 used. 
but the Astro modification process was more like $275, $300. It's a fairly old camera. I actually have a Sony a7 III that I'm thinking about getting modified, and that's gonna become my new Milky Way camera. But for now, this is my little deep sky DSLR. And if it wasn't getting cloudy, we'd be about ready to shoot. Now, of course, it would be a crime for us to have a clear night out and me not bring at least one of my telescopes out. So I'm bringing this out too. This is the Ascar 103 APO with a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro Who camera. I hate those long names. While the small rig is shooting the constellation of Orion, we're gonna use this to get a very close up image of the Orion Nebula itself. All right, it's about time to get set up. Wish me luck, because it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit out there and it is dropping quick. This is where I'm gonna shoot Orion tonight. I can't set up at my house because Orion's gonna be in the south, way too many obstructions, so this field is going to be the perfect spot. And I have to go back home right now and get better gloves. This is not working. I cannot feel my fingers at all. Holy crap! <laughs> All right, that was a pretty easy setup. It's almost dark. I still have to go back home and get the telescope and put it on top of that mount over there. So I'll see you when I get back. Okay, so the cold has killed my video camera. It didn't even last 45 minutes, but we're still going. I got the camera up on the tracker and I've polar aligned already. Now what we're trying to do is focus on a star. I've got Sirius in the live view screen right here. We're gonna try to zoom in on it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this focus wheel and the key is to make it not red, not blue, but as small of a pinpoint as possible and also solid white. So you just went to the red there, that's too far. And it just kind of went into the kind of a greenish, bluish aqua color there, that's too far. My God, y'all, it's so cold out here. Okay, there we go. It is a tiny pinpoint, it's a neutral color, it's not blue, it's not red, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna try to point this thing up at Orion. All right, I got the Star Tracker turned on. I've got my ISO at about 1600, and I've got this intervalometer down here, programmed at two minutes. I just took my first test shot. Oh boy. That's, that is absolutely incredible. I can see Barnard's loop and all kinds of stuff in there. This is amazing, and I can zoom way in and see no visible star trailing whatsoever. All right, so I'm gonna to try to take about 30 to 60 of these photographs and stack them later. All right, you folks from the north are probably laughing at me, but seriously, we're not used to that kind of cold down here in the south. It happens maybe once every few years, and when it happens, it only happens for a few days. That's just brutal. I spent the entire night sitting in my car with my fingers against the heater, but I was able to capture 136 photos of the Orion constellation. I remember saying that I was gonna take 30 to 60, but when that 60 was done, I just reset the intervalometer to take 60 more, and I just kept shooting until Orion started to set and I couldn't take any more photos. So I ended up with about four and a half hours of data on the constellation of Orion, that's great. 
And the same thing with my telescope shooting the Orion Nebula. Four and a half hours of data that I ended up combining with data that I took about a year ago, giving me about 10 hours. So that was a great night. I mean, that was a really good way to go out. I had no idea I wasn't gonna be able to shoot again for at least a month. The weather has been absolutely atrocious, but I think it's finally coming to an end. Thank God. I'm really happy that I got the wedge base for the move shoot move that made polar alignment so much quicker and easier. I don't know why I didn't get that in the first place. That's a really good investment. The polar scope on the other hand, I mean, I can't really see a difference between using the laser pointing at the North Star or properly polar aligning with the polar scope. I'm shooting with a 24 millimeter lens. I don't really see a difference yet. When I start shooting with something like a 50 millimeter lens, then I think I'll see the difference with the polar scope. I'm still loving shooting with the Rokinon 24 millimeter. I've really gotten used to focusing it to where it's not red or blue. I think a lot of photos that I've taken with it in the past, the stars are kind of on the reddish pink side. I wasn't quite nailing the focus, I think. But now I'm really getting used to it. Before we get out of here and I'll show you the photos, I just want to give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Y'all are amazing. It's been a horrible, horrible winter for all of us, and yet you still stuck around. That means you are the absolute best. Thank you all so much. And if you want to support this channel, join us on our Discord and chat with us all the time, please. I have a link to my Patreon below. We'd love to hang out with you and chat with you. And speaking of supporting this channel, if you want to support it in another way, I am an affiliate with Move Shoot Move and Agena Astro. So if you want to buy a Move Shoot Move Nomad or any of the accessories I talk about, use my link in the description below. That really helps out this channel. Thank you all, all so much for everything. Thank you for making it through the whole video. I guess I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. As always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes, and we'll see you in the next one.